Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, I think right now we're seeing a period of um, of kind of disruptive change on two levels. One is, you know, we've got the introduction of you know virtualization and cloud services, which in themselves are disruptive. You know, it's 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 causing a major rethink amongst COOs you know, across the world. <clears throat> we've seen some markets be more progressive, you know, Australia, New Zealand, North America, Europe, etc., and they've really em em embraced those technologies and they're realising the benefits. And Asia's been a little bit behind, but, um, you know, they're, they're, they're quickly catching up. So on one, on one hand, you've got a very disruptive um, kind of technology landscape. And vendors are scrambling right now to get together strategies that align with a virtual rather than physical type infrastructure model. Um, on the uh, and so with that, then the vendors, uh, in in my view, having worked at a couple of vendors in this industry over many years, uh, are really reevaluating how they make how they take advantage of of these trends. Um, and so you've got some vendors who are taking a very um, kind of partner orientated approach. You've got other vendors that are taking more of a kind of a homogeneous, vertically integrated stack approach. Um, you know, so the way that we look at it is there'll be two categories of technology choices. Um, one is around cho uh, choice and flexibility, uh, which is very much around the principles of x86 architecture. Um, and we call that converged. Some examples of converged would be NetApp's partnership with Cisco and VMware under Imagine Virtually Anything, or EMC's partnership with um, the same same two partners uh, under VCE or what we know as Arcadia, where they will collaborate and provide clients with an opportunity to, to effectively choose best of breed on the compute line, on the IO line, on the store line, and then the software that kind of governs and, and uh, and enables the, the underlying infrastructure. So that's the converge piece, which by the way, I think will win. And I think that history has proven that that, that open models uh, are more successful than, than closed models. Um, a classic example of that in very macro terms is, you know, think about how the market changed from 1980 to 2010. In 1980, the market was 100% proprietary. 2010, the market is almost 100% open, you know, and then even take that at a more micro level and look at, say, workstations, and we discussed this yesterday, where that market was entirely proprietary and now it's 100% open standards. I think the market is conditioned around open standards. They demand, they demand open standards, and I, I believe that the ability to innovate within an open standard environment is much higher. Um, and particularly these consortia are, are very strong. So I think we'll see the converged piece. Now, in parallel, then, you've got the vertically integrated homogeneous piece, and you've got a couple of very large influential vendors who have taken that approach. Um, you know, Oracle, IBM, um, to a lesser extent HP, but they have their own vertically integrated stack and uh, proprietary automation and uh, orchestration and management tools with their matrix offering. And so I think that in order to avoid vendor locking, the client needs to really understand what choices are available to them. They need to understand what their business requirements are, their operational requirements are, their technology requirements. They need to understand what what are the SLAs, even just at a core infrastructure level, that would be associated with using those technologies in terms of availability of infrastructure, um, levels of resiliency, performance, scalability, particularly as it relates to investment protection. Um, these types of considerations. Um, and, and then also understand the roadmap. You know, vendor lock-in is not such a bad thing if you can, if the, ro the long-term roadmap, let's look out three to five years, which effectively aligns well with the depreciation cycle of a, a major IT asset, is aligned with the business objectives. And so if you were to go, if you look at, say, Oracle's recent announcement around their, um, their kind of vertically integrated cloud offering, um, you know, if you were to procure that and that met your requirements in full because you're an Oracle user um, and you could depreciate that asset over a five-year period and you could demonstrate how that asset could deliver optimal return on investment, that would be a reasonable choice. Um, and so I think that there's no right or wrong answer, but I think the client needs to understand, the customers need to understand they have a choice, roadmaps, SLAs, um, and uh, 
and understanding their own requirements are really critical. You know, we go into a lot of environments today that are just poorly architected and poorly designed and as a result deliver poor levels of service. And I think that in the past, customers have tended to listen and, and believe in full everything that they've been told. Uh, by their vendor partner. And I believe that the vendor partner has honestly approached it with best intent and best endeavour. But sometimes best endeavour and intent and you know, the, 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 you know, the real customer need can, can sometimes be slightly disconnected. And it's, it's driven by commercial considerations and timing and, and you know, occasionally you know, individual sales reps' agendas and whatnot. And, and we believe that those mistakes don't need to be repeated. And I think that um, you know, we thoroughly believe in VIFX that uh, you know, failing to plan is planning to fail. And particularly as it relates to architecture and design and, and uh, incorporating the right sets of technologies. So you know, my advice to, to our clients and, and clients in the future will be, you know, let's, let's, let's stop, pause and reflect and understand what you want to do with the technologies you've got. Let's look at your existing set of ecosystem technology partners. I mean, you've got them and they've probably been the right ones for the right sets of reasons. Let's understand where you want to go and whether those partners are uh, in alignment with your longer term objectives. If so, let's understand what technologies they're bringing to market and whether they complement your business objectives rather than your technical objectives. And if so, when those two things are congruent, then it would make every sense to move forward with a vert vertically integrated stack. Um, but you know, the financials on vertically integrated stacks or proprietary technologies have not proven to be beneficial to clients in the long term. So I would always advocate a con evaluating the converged stack, leveraging best of breed, um, and by doing so, avoiding the, the, the long-term costs that are associated with buying an asset that is homogeneous in nature.